so. Hello. It's a dead zone, I mean, dead. I think yeah. so. <laughs> Hello. Hello? Yeah, you are. Yeah. That's so weird. That's so weird. I have that effect on you. Oh, there we go. Hi. For real uh, this time. I know. Hi. Hi, Vancouver. Alessandro Giuliani, I am, uh, among other things, the voice of L in Death Note. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Drummond, and among other things, I am the voice of the Shinigami Ryuk. <laughs> Born and raised, woo -woo! and I play light in Death Note. So, before hey. we get into all these fantastic questions that I'm sure you guys have prepped and ready, talk to me about right now in your lives. Before we jump back, what's going on? What's the latest and greatest? What are you guys up to? What you I, doing? I got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Got a cat. Uh, latest and greatest. Wow, voice-wise, I'm uh, pretty excited. I get a lot of villains. I don't know why, but if anyone's tuned into Netflix lately, it's this streaming service. Some people have it. Some people are ditching it right now, as far as I've heard. But anyways, it's out there, and um, I play Doctor Eggman in Sonic Prime. So that's a pretty. Good one. I just actually recorded a video game yesterday, which I'm not allowed to talk about. Oh! Um, I had a, another video game called uh, New Tales from the Borderland, which came out not too long ago. Um, but mostly I've been working on kid shows. So stuff that you probably haven't seen. Um, I got to play like dinosaurs and things like that, so that's awesome. And real live kid shows since you had two babies during COVID. There you go. That, that's what I've been up to. AJ got a cat, I had two children. <laughs> and any Death Note fans, you might get a kick out of this. My daughter, her name is Kira. Yeah! yeah. Told them. They were yeah, they they're prepped. They're yeah. prepped. They well, so we can get to as many as possible. How about we just jump in with the first one right off the bat here? Hello. Hello. Oh, I've got a great one to start it off. I think. Okay. Do you guys ship LX Light? <laughs> <laughs> you let off with a real doozy, right? <laughs> you know, I don't ship it, but I'm just asking. Like, you're just asking. I really Do don't. I? Okay, all right. I mean, it's it's almost too easy on this show because there's two characters that are both very sexy <laughs> and share a lot of oh, screen time. Stop. So. <laughs> it's all about you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have much of a comment on that. It's it's obvious. Just look towards tennis matches. Feet washing sessions. <laughs> the story writes itself. I need more of a challenge. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good one. That's a great start. <laughs> Loosen up the room a bit. Hey, I'm Sandro. Hi, I'm Hi. a big fan of everything you've done. Can Great you tell to see me? you again. Thank you. Can you Please tell me? Please come everywhere. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <Pause there. laughs> um, can you tell me the weirdest thing you, that has happened to you in your acting career? The weirdest, the question was the weirdest thing that's happened to me in my acting career. Oh, man. I've been doing this a long time, so there's so many things. It's a great question. I mean, I mean, I was telling a story to Brian today of one of the strangest things that I've ever had to do. Uh, I was in the film War for the Planet of the Apes with Andy Serkis. And so for that film, because I was playing an ape, I had to go to ape camp. And literally for a month, I studied with this ape Jedi named Terry Notary who does all the motion capture for any animal that you see in any movie that isn't a real animal or 
He does all the mocap for Groot in the uh, you know Guardians movies and all that. And he was sort of our guru, and we'd go and meet him every day, and he would sort of try to find our inner ape, and then like walk around as apes and jump, and like have, we had a jungle gym, and we would just pretend to be apes all day. That was like the job. But then at the end of it, Andy Circus came and visited us, and we had an ape improv where we literally like left the studio and went out into the city as apes and like he, he was wild, he was crazy. We went into the kitchen behind the cafeteria at the studio and he started like throwing cutlery around and we were all like, all of a sudden we were all just an ape family together. That was probably a highlight and also one of the strangest things I've ever had to do. But they started throwing poop at each other and it was over. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Hi, this is a question for um, Hi. Hi.
and we just scared a lot of people away. Yeah. Where did everybody go? The people at the other theater are like, what is happening? Anime. <laughs> <laughs> Fire away. Hi, someone already asked my question, but could you tell us a joke in character? A joke in character? Yeah. Oh. Guess what? Chicken bun. <laughs> How do you organize a party in space? <laughs> you plan it. Oh. <laughs> Joke, right? Not a good one, but... I got one for you here. Ryu's joke. Why did God make our bum cracks this way instead of this way? As if you went down a slide with your bum crack this way, it would go. <laughs> That's a bad joke. That's a perfect joke. <laughs> So, this is a question for Brad. I'm curious what your headspace was during the potato chip line and like why you decided to just chew the scenery so deliciously because I think all of us really love that scene. What a great sentence. I, I'm just a big fan of potato chips. And I think that, that was probably one of, if not the first time, that potato chips had worked their way into an anime series that I was a part of. So I really embraced the role. I visualized and tastealized the chip and went off the visuals. I've never seen a potato chip turn into fireworks um, and happen in slow-mo and freeze frame and all that kind of stuff. So I really embraced the, uh, the chip and I've been embracing the chip ever since. Embrace the chip. Embrace the chip. I have to. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> Hi. Voice do we have any rituals to prepare for our characters? Rituals? I <laughs> sacrifice a goat every morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, voiceover really depends on the, on the character. If, if for honest, not humorous answers, it's to me it's, it would be all about just listening to my voice reference a few times on the way there, and um, you gotta warm it up just like an instrument if you've ever played one in school. This is an instrument, and it's gotta get warmed up before you show up, because uh, it's it's obvious when it isn't, and you're like, especially with a voice like Ryuk, if it's not ready to kind of rumble around down there, it's really difficult to do. With some voices, though, you don't need to warm up at all, and L would count as one of those, because <laughs> the lower and kind of more mumbly he was, the better. So, in that case, I just rolled right out of bed. <laughs> House code on, showing up in studio. This isn't for any particular role as far as prep goes, but usually, and this is more just kind of warming up your voice, I'll just sing in the car. And like anybody that sings in the car on the way to studio or just did sings in the car in general, I'll sing the top of my lungs, really kind of work out the voice until I hit a stoplight. And then, then it looks like I'm scratching my eyebrow or rubbing my nose, but I will not stop singing. I just don't want the person next to me in the car to be like, what is Is it the opening about? sequence to Death Note that you'd be singing? I, I did learn how to sing that opening theme in Japanese at one point, so at one point, one, one day probably, you will do it again for us. One day. Maybe before the weekend's over. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's a tall order. I think this is our only panel. It kind of put me on the spot. <laughs> Thank you. What breed is your cat? <laughs> Thanks for asking. His name is Flash, and he's a tuxedo cat. He's black and white. He's mostly black with like white belly and white paws. And a uh, pink nose. That's adorable. Uh, thank you. He is adorable. Thank you. AJ, I appreciate that you invited his name into the conversation before we just went right to breed. That's so rude. <laughs> what breed is your... Well, his name is... <laughs> Flash Julius, if you have to know his full name. Um, before my question, I just wanted to say that 
The Death Note English dub is one of my favorite anime dubs in English ever. Thank you. And it's such an inspiration for me. I'm trying to be a voice actor, and especially Elle's speech near the end when he's talking to all the kids about like monsters and the fighting of monsters. That is like a really inspirational piece for me as an actor. And uh, my question is, as someone who just graduated high school last year and is looking to go into voiceover professionally, what would be your advice for me? Good question. Everyone takes a bit of a different route there. Um, mine was through theater school. Um, yours wasn't through theater school? Yeah, yours, you went to music school? I went to music school. I mean, it all helped. I mean, gosh, voice acting specifically, I think you just want to be an actor. You want to be a good actor, right? You want to be able to have an imagination and for them uh, to be able to be channeled through your voice. I went to music school to train as an opera singer, so I learned how to use my voice and like really um, work it out. Um, and then, uh, you know, my advice to you would be um, if, you're, if you love doing it um, and you feel like you have an sort of a passion or an aptitude for it, then yeah, seek some sort of training of some kind. Um, whether it's theater school or improv. specifically of, uh, improv is great, comedy, voice acting, school specifically, of which there are a few. Um, you know, I do find that music helps a lot. Like, I have a real good musical ear, and a lot of it is a bit like, you know, especially when you're in a room with a bunch of actors, there's a rhythm to it, and there's sort of like a jazz to it, there's a bit of a of that feeling, so um, yeah, just anything along that vein, I think would help. Working with others, for sure. It's, a lot of people try and figure it all out at home, alone, get a microphone and just play with voices, but in the end, you, you, usually you are working with others when you're performing as an actor, so the opportunity to bounce stuff off other characters, although with, with anime, that's not the case, and a pretty great show came together with me never being in a room with a single other actor for the entire show. I only did my lines with an act, with a director and an engineer. I never saw these guys unless we crossed paths coming out of the studio, and they still managed to put together a pretty great show. So, um, yeah. And like, more so now than when I think any of us got started, there's a lot more ways to play around and practice uh, voiceover type work. There's a lot more people doing things, um, you know, on the internet, and there's various streaming platforms that are broadcasting. We all have great recording devices. Yeah, in the back of Every, our everybody's got a microphone probably in their hand right now. Um, so there's lots of different things that you can do to practice and connect with other people that are either interested in the same things or maybe looking for people to do some voices for projects they're working on. Um, there's a lot more opportunity for everyone to kind of have the power to do that now. And one thing that I would say is, if you're looking to get into voice acting specifically, um, some people make the mistake of getting hung up on how many different voices they can do as to whether they have a shot at being a voice actor. Um, the majority of the anime projects in particular that I've worked on were not big stretches to my voice. They're not cartoony voices. So a lot of these shows, especially now, and there's a bit of a, a shift too, they're looking more for performance. Uh, so voice acting is not all about the voice, although that is kind of your vehicle. Acting is still there in the title. So performance is always gonna be important. So anything you can do to kind of work on your performing skills is not gonna hurt you, it's only gonna help you. And there's so many other facets to it. There's narration or voiceover, um, you know, audiobooks and commercial, you know, so there's lots of different, you know, niches that you can find. Yeah, good luck. Thank yeah. You. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. I love the anime. Let me just, I'm, it's my favorite. Um, my question for all of you guys is what was your favorite part, either about your character or about the anime in general, that kind of got you interested in voice acting or The favorite part? I. It's funny, we, as far as I'm concerned, we all want to book gigs as actors. So you audition for things, you're always kind of just hopeful to get something. I was never asked to audition for you. I actually was auditioned for, I was sent the sides, which is a small piece of script you're sent to work on before you go into the studio for Light's dad. 
um, a couple of the other detectives, like a few other roles, but I showed up at the studio and that was where they displayed the pictures where you could see what it looked like, who you were auditioning for. They didn't send those. And I saw this creepy looking demon guy and I was just drawn to it. I'm like, oh, who's that guy? I'm like, that is such a cool, why did I not get sent those signs? So I asked the director, Carl Willems, um, at the time, if I could read for that creepy guy. I didn't know anything about what he was even about. He played a brief piece of the Japanese actor. He said, don't copy this, but he does have a creepy laugh. So come up with your own, I'll give you five minutes, and then come back in and read them. And I just played with an idea that came to my head, and I didn't even know what the script was about, what he, would, what he his part was in it. We don't get any of that information. We just get a little, little bits of the character's dialogue. So I, I fell in love with him as the show progressed, because he was just this looming figure that oversaw what was happening but didn't guide the process and, and that's what I just kind of loved about that character and that was the one that was got cast I didn't get anybody else they cast me as that role so it was kind of bizarre but sometimes you fall in love with him when you're doing it and even after the fact I, could, I think I feel like I love this guy more after having finished it than even when I was working on it and because of just the, the love that our fans have for him. Um, I, I told this story already today but um, the, the audition sides that you're talking about. For Death Note in particular, it's one of the shows, one of the rare shows for me where I walked in the door for my audition and the one page of dialogue had a sample of dialogue from episode one all the way to episode 37. So in one page, I could see the story arc and the character development that was gonna happen in this particular character I was reading for all kind of unfold right before my very eyes on one page and it's not often that you get that much insight into a character that you're hopeful to play. So I was very excited when I got cast to play Lightning Down Note because I knew it was going to be a very bumpy ride. And usually the bumpier the rides, the more fun they are. And this was no exception. Yeah, it sort of just turned into an audition story uh, answer. But for me, um, Death Note is, I think, pretty much the only anime I've ever done. I've done other animation, like other cartoons, but it's the only dub that I've really done. Um, and so at the time it was the same. And I I didn't get all the information that Brad did even. Like I had a few lines in the character description, as I remember. And then, yeah, I just took, I took a stab at it. But I really didn't know what I was in for with Elle. Like when I booked the part, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I guess, you know, we'll do it. He's off camera at first. I didn't even see him, you know, like just a few lines. So I, I discovered L in all his glory and all his eccentricity, kind of in real time, like episode by episode, as you guys did watching the show. Um, so as new things were revealed about him, they were surprising to me and so much fun. And I realized just how unique a character he was as I was doing it. Great question, thank you. Thank you so much. Just step a little closer to the microphone and we can. First, I want to say thank you because um, I really like it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, thank you, you for, for liking watching. it. Yeah. Um, and my question is, do you like Chainsaw? Do you like Chainsaw Man? I haven't seen enough of it yet, but I know a lot of the performers that are in it. Um, and many of them I've, I've met at cons and are friends of mine. I, I look forward to seeing it, but I haven't actually seen an episode of it yet. All I've seen is a lot of clips online, and it looks fabulous, actually. So um, I'll have to get some more insight from some of the fans here about when and where I should tune into it, but it, it looks pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of my favorites uh, outside of this show is Attack on Titan was one that I kind of got involved in. I, there's only so much time I have in my life to just sit in front of the TV and watch anime, animation, but that's one that I've, uh, I've enjoyed over the past few years. My world's been kind of flipped on its side as of late, so I'm not watching a whole lot of things right now. But for the number of people that have asked me about Chainsaw Man, I mean, it kind of equals the number of people that have told me not to watch the Netflix uh, Death Note movie. <laughs> so now I'm very excited to watch them both. <laughs> yeah, similarly, a lot of people have told me about Chainsaw Man. I will check it out sometime. But I have young kids at home too, so we've been dipping a toe through like 
Avatar, Last Airbender, and Korra, which is awesome, and Dragon Prince. We haven't quite gotten there yet. Studio Ghibli got in that. Yeah, Studio Ghibli stuff, of course. Totoro, love it, all that stuff. Um, but we'll get there. Yeah, thank you. I guess there is a Death Note to Chainsaw Man pipeline that we yeah, have maybe, missed. Maybe, maybe, okay. yeah, it's feeling that way. My friends, we've got around 15 minutes left, so still plenty of time. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go. Uh, what's the scene that you had to keep retaking because you were laughing so much? Oh, a little, a little louder. Uh, what's the scene that you had to keep redoing because you were laughing so much? <laughs> Death Note? <laughs> A scene that we had to keep redoing. And well, I didn't find myself a lot. Usually for me, um, the scenes that you have to redo a lot, and sometimes it gets the giggles going a little bit, is where there's a lot of physicality and it's a long line and mouth flaps, uh, the mouth flaps of the character are all over the place. Mine would probably have been when Ryuk is flipping out about apples, right? Like usually when he's like, oh, come on, like, get me some apples. Like when he's going and bouncing off the ceiling, those can be a little harder to track visually when you're trying to hit the flaps in the right time. I don't know how much, how often I get giggling about it. I usually get more frustrated <laughs> trying to get the line. There's sometimes you'll be in there recording and then the, the guys on the other side of the glass, like the director and the engineers, will start killing themselves with laughter and you don't know what's going on. And it's happened on different series from time to time where you're trying to match the flaps. And let's say it's a, a, like a, a long truncated piece of dialogue and you miss one or something. So then you start kind of cursing to yourself. Oh, I can't believe that, 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 that. And your curses match the flaps perfectly. And then you just see them killing themselves in the booth. And they're like, you want to see that back? Well, no, I know it didn't fit. Check this out. Don't play it back. And your curses are right on point. <laughs> but an actual answer to your question, did not, I, I didn't record this a bunch of times because I was laughing too much, but ironically, the laugh in the last episode, I recorded once. I was very prepared going into that episode to get ridiculed for the rest of my life based on my performance. So I was prepared. And I went into the laugh, and they said, Okay, Brian, let's move on. I said, bip, 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 bip. Uh, let, me, let me just try it again. I, I, you know, I worked on this. Let me get back into it. All right. So I went and recorded it again. They're like, yeah, we like that even better. Let's move on. <laughs> so they let me probably record it four or five times, and they were happy with the first take. And I realized when you give the editors, the director, and the producers too many options, then you end up with a laugh that has a kind of accidental horse witty in the middle of it that then you, did, you have to do for the next 20 years, apparently. So, lesson learned. Lesson learned. Thank you. That's a great hat. Where did you get it? I made it out of a pool noodle. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you guys can see? Are you, you send a tutorial? You're all Shinigami eyes in yeah. here. You can all see. Nice. I made it half my lifespan. Yeah? <laughs> so is there going to be a tutorial for the hat? or The people love the hat. A tutorial? I don't know. <laughs> You should, have, you should have filmed yourself making it. I would have injured, it was a very sharp X-Acto knife and a pool noodle. If I tried to film it, I would have a lot more band-aids to my cosplay right now. <laughs> so, but it's given me ideas on, on how to improve it for another version. So maybe if I ever do that, I'll, I'll, I'll try and film it somehow. But I don't, I make weird things. I'm a big Halloween nerd. Um, and I make ridiculous costumes from time to time, more so when I have the time. But I never know what I'm doing when I get into it. It's just usually kind of comes together in the end. So I, I don't know, it'd be a very meandering video. <laughs> and then, and then if I, I mean, before and after is probably what I, pool noodle, like in, in a pool, and then this. <laughs> you know, and a picture of like an X-Acto blade and maybe a little bit of blood. Yeah, there you go, that's the process. Brad is a very creative young man. <laughs> As a close, yeah, get really close to the mic. Yes. Yes. What is the conversation look like? What does the conversation look like? That was a lot of characters from very different shows. You said Iron Man. Series that I think you said the butler from Pac Man goes to 
from that man who goes, his name was Buttface, wasn't it? Yeah, Buttface. Buttface, yeah. And who was the other one? They're in uh, Orange Julius. I, and butt fakes are in Orange Julius. I love it. <laughs> wow, I would have to remember what my Iron Man even uh, sounded like. I, it would be great if butt face was the voice of like his suit, right? That would be that would be the best because he kind of had sort of an upper crusty sort of voice, didn't it? I don't even know if I can remember butt faces. Voice. I'm sorry. This I is, can't this is yeah. I, I, it's. I think I, that one has dropped right out of my mind. What did Buttface sound like? Was he sort of a, a buttery kind of, oh, he sort of a little voice like this, wasn't he? Ah, yes. Well, I am, I think I will have a strawberry banana, please. <laughs> and Iron Man was like, okay, whatever you want, Buttface. I'm just gonna go with one of the hot dogs. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> <That's great>. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I wanted Julius now, that was very convincing. Nice. That was like, a great one. Deep cut question. Very <laughs> My favorite part in the Death Note anime. Oh, whether or not we were in, even in the scene. Yeah, just the anime oh. in general. What was your favorite part of the series? Oh, um, yeah, that is my beginnings and endings. I love. There's, there's so much that happens in between, but I love um, my opening sequences when he first meets Light, and then it's a toss-up between when he writes his name in the book himself at the very end. Oh, oh spoiler. <laughs> At the end, those, I mean, those, and it's probably because they're burned in my mind the most. So much happens in between, but I remember the beginning and remember the end, the strongest supportive scenes for me. The, the, I love them both. I don't know if I said this, yeah, maybe I said this to you, you asked me if the the autograph booth is there, but my favorite section of, of, that I can think of now, there's a section where Elle and Light first meet in person when when Ella's pretending just to be like a college student, you know, like in his class, and there's this funny, it's like all of a sudden it turns into a rom-com for a little while, like Ella and Light playing tennis, and oh, they're really competitive, and they're going for a walk, and I imagine they went for cake or something, you know. Uh, it's where I realized the show wasn't necessarily just gonna be this dark, dark thing, that there was gonna be some light in it as well. So that's kind of, that's a, I'm very fond of that little episode in that section. There's, I mean, I'm thinking of a bunch of scenes. We already talked about the potato chips, so I gotta, I gotta, be, I gotta steer clear of that now. But there's a scene that I'm remembering now, and it, at the time it reminded me of something else. And it kind of showed me where Light's head was going in a very strange way. It's when he was constructing a false shelf and like a very intricate trigger button and like the drawer, that yeah. end thing, like all this kind of stuff. And when I was watching the visuals for that as we were recording it, it reminded me of old like Tom and Jerry cartoons. <laughs> and like the blueprints, and you would kind of step into that and see how these crazy contraptions worked. And it made me very excited to see where the show was going and it went in a slightly different direction than I was expecting <laughs> after the Tom and Jerry thought popped in my head, but still, fun nonetheless. Thank you. I just want to say Death Note was the first day that I watched, so I thank you for getting me into anime. It's my obsession now. <laughs> oh, hey! We've brought another one to the dark side. <laughs> yes! <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, and we're sorry. <laughs> Favorite kind of apple? Oh, I am. I do like red ones as compared to, uh, but I like a really tart apple, um, but not quite as tart as a Granny Smith. So I'm kind of I, there's Sun Kiss. There's some of my favorites right now. I'm a Honey Crisp. Crisp. Honey Crisp. Honey yeah. Crisps are good. Yeah. Um, apple pie. Does that count? Yeah. If apple pie doesn't count, apple crisp, apple yeah. cobbler, caramel apple. Not that fresh fruit stuff. Apple tea. Cook that thing up. Thank you. Hello, sorry, Hello. before I ask my question, may I record your answer? Do I have a sure. question? Sure. Thank you so much. Um, just 
just wanted to ask on behalf of my brother, he's not here right now, but he's an aspiring voice actor. What is your tip and what would you recommend to stand out in auditions when you're applying for voice acting positions? Wow, how to stand out in auditions when applying for voice acting positions. <laughs> I know, we call them auditions, but uh, yeah. You know, um, your own voice is original. Like, nobody in here sounds like anybody else. Every single person has a completely different instrument. So you want to find the best way to use that. Whenever I have an audition, especially if I know the show has any comedy at all related, I don't care if it's in the script or not, uh, my script or not, I want to find a way to make somebody snicker or laugh just a little. So I always, whether it's at the opening of my audition or midway or partway, try and find something that just elevates the humor, even if my script doesn't call for it as much. Because I know when I laugh at somebody doing something, I remember them. I just, it, just the smallest thing, and we like, oh, that, that was hilarious. I will remember them because it, 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 it kicked in the serotonin. So that would be, if it's, if it's comedy based at all, look for an opportunity to create humor where you might not think it should be. That's great advice. I, I would say this absolutely the same thing. Find, don't, don't be too stuck in the script. If it's a comedic thing, just go for it. And, and, and don't be shy about ad-libbing, um, putting your stamp on it, to stand out from the hundred other voices that they're hearing, right? And in this day and age, it seems like majority of roles, they're hearing a lot more people from a lot more places on the planet. So this is kind of good advice. And for a director, a casting director, a producer that's looking to cast a series, a show, a part, whatever it is, they, if they have a decent ear and some understanding of the industry, it's a lot easier for them to bring somebody back, to pull them back a little bit, than to try and whole performance out of somebody. So you don't want everything to be crazy over the top if it doesn't call for it, but you're better off being memorable in that way where somebody can see something in what you've done and say, well, maybe we'll just dial it back a little bit, rather than being too safe and have them just next. And if you're worried at all, it's great to try a couple of reads. I'll send multiple reads for, for, for roles, but if you weren't sure if they wanted this a little more straight or a little more over the top, just do that over the top one that's crazy, but then do us one that's pretty straight. Send two, just because you don't quite know, and they're like, oh, we can go both ways, it works. That's actually a really good point, yeah. specifically now since a lot of these auditions were recording on our own which means we don't have immediate feedback. We're reliant just on whatever materials we're given, which sometimes are very sparse or conflicting. Uh, that happens quite a bit, so yeah. that's actually a good point. Your instincts, you might question them. They might be right, they might be way off. So if you do one with, this is how I think I'm interpreting the material and the instructions, um, and this is one that might be a little bit of a different take on it. Okay, you're welcome. Come on. Don't Very take nice. my our, our last five minutes, my friends. Last five. Oh, we'll burn. We'll burn. Um, before I ask my question, I was wondering if I could record your answer. Sure. Okay. Um, could you say, I want an apple, please? Everyone? Yeah. All of us? Together yeah, or separate? Um, either or. A list of them separate. I would like an apple, please. <laughs> I want an apple, please! I want an apple, please! <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. Um, it's not my actual question, but uh, Death Death was one of the best enemies I've ever experienced in my entire life. And so thank you for making so awesome. Oh, Thank you're you. welcome. That's so sweet. And my question is, can, can you all separately do your best evil laugh? All separately do our best evil laugh. Okay. Character. Or character? Character. And character, okay. I already did my laugh. Yeah. That was your evil laugh? No, you can try to do Brad's laugh, laugh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,
That was a Ryuk. <laughs> I was, yeah. You know what mine is. <laughs> How does it feel to be, you know, more exposed than even the, really the creators of the show, you know, who could be up here telling us all kinds of amazing insights that even we wouldn't know? It's odd, and it's it, it, it's that way for so much of Fan Expo, really. You see a lot of performers up here, but not really, like, there's not a lot of booths, but the writers, right, who, who are the people whose minds these were dreamt from which who I would just as much as you love to pick their brains as to where these stories came from, how they found a way to put them on paper and create the images for the characters. That's a great question, but it is odd, as, as AJ said when we started, to 16, 17 years after we recorded this, to sit in a room and see this many people still interested. It's a, it would be amazing to, I'd be one of the ones sitting out there myself, if the creator was up here telling us about why they created the show. That's it would, it would, I would love to hear that. One thing that's also fairly unique with a show like Death Note is there's the manga, which has a certain storyline, story arc, and story direction. Then there's the anime, which has a slightly altered story, direction, and etc. And then there's the uh, live action uh, Japanese films that were made, which also have a slightly different retelling of the story. Now, luckily, uh, you missed one, the Netflix movie. Oh, I have <laughs> No, I didn't. <laughs> um, and we were fortunate to work on both the anime and the, the live-action Japanese series of movies. And it seems like between those two vehicles and the manga, there's kind of a different experience for different people depending on what they want to source out. And for people that want to source out all of them and then compare them. You don't necessarily always get that with a particular title, so pretty cool. Who here has seen the, the live action Japanese um, movies? There was three of them? How many did we do? Three? I did two, but you did three. Did I do three? Okay. Yeah, it's, they're interesting. If you can dig them up, they're fun to watch. It's all the, the original cast from the, um, from the anime that, that, that did the voices in the live yeah. action. I believe, am I right, that there is a new show in the works? Like I believe the, the Duffer the, Brothers from Stranger Things have the rights to Death yeah. Note, and we may see something about that in the future, which would be fun. It lives on, maybe it lives on. Without us, perhaps, or, yeah. you know, hopefully with us. <laughs> Good question, yeah. Thank you. That was a fantastic last question. Everyone, thank you so much for all of your questions. And can we give another round of applause? Thanks, everybody. It's thank great to be so here in our hometown and feeling the love. Nothing like being at home. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Everyone, give it up one more time. That was on the right. And uh, thank you for your time, you guys. And thanks again for your questions. Remember everyone, they're going to be back at their tables tomorrow, too, yeah? We're going